Okay, so I hope you are all hearing me well. Uh, please, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. very good. So yes, let's quickly let's, let's quickly go through the course content as I indicated last week. I wanted to start with you last week, so let's quickly rush through the course content and then I will start something with you today. So we are going to look at new trends in nursing, and it is uh nurse four three two. I'm saying as to poke entry, the credit hour is two. Uh, the course description. I think I took you through all this uh, last week when the network wasn't that stable. So I think you, I'll send this to you when you give me the WhatsApp platform so I can communicate the WhatsApp platform with all the news and the slides with you. So we are going to look at uh, the first we are going to consider is uh, future challenges of nursing, under which we look at changing demographics and increasing diversity, technology explosion, levels of healthcare data, electronic health records, computerized physician order entry, future of nursing care, and trends to watch, extended role of the nurse and aerospace nursing, disaster nursing, hospice nursing, military nurse, domiciliary nursing, forensic nursing, private duty nurse. These are all the categories of areas you can look at. Telenursing. So this is uh, something that started by uh, uh, Sister Diana on the television. Telenurse, rehabilitation nurse, nurse epidemiologist, occupational health nurse, school health nurse, expanded role of the nurse. So under the expanded role of the nurse, we look at advanced practice nurses, clinical nurse specialists, Certified nurse midwives, certified registered nurse anesthetist, nurse practitioners, nurse educator, nurse researcher, nurse administrator. Then we look at nurse as an author, which is also part of the extended role of the nurse. So uh, the next we look at is conflict management. So how do you manage conflict at an organization when you meet them? On the ward, if you are at loggerheads with each other, how do you manage it? If you are a nurse manager and your subordinates are fighting, how do you manage the conflict to make sure that the work doesn't suffer uh, from these conflicts? So we look at definition of conflict, the process of conflict, types of conflict in an organization, phases of conflict, causes of conflict, signs of conflict, conflict management strategies, and resolution of conflict effective interpersonal skills, barriers to communication, tactful conversation, building relationship, active listening behaviors. So that is the second part. The next part is we look at spirituality in nursing. So introduction, we look at the historical overview, spiritual care. On the world, we don't only give physical care, but we also give spiritual care as well. How many times do you pray with your clients? How many times do you help your clients to do their own prayers? Do you have a designated area where these patients can go and do their uh, prayers, especially if the person is a Muslim? Do you have a place for them that they can go and pray? If the person is a Roman Catholic or any other Christian religion, do you give them the opportunity to have prayers on the, uh, as they are on the hospital environment, on the ward? So, we look at all this. So we look at spirituality and nursing care. What is spirituality? And then we look at spirituality defined. Spirituality includes concepts related to spirituality. Uh, importance of knowing about spiritual needs of an individual or of a patient. Examples of spiritual needs. We look at examples of spiritual needs and then spiritual well-being. If we are saying you are having spiritual well-being, what does it entail? Characteristics indicative of spiritual well being, spiritual practices affecting nursing care, spirituality and religion. What is religion? And religion, some, some terms that are used to differentiate them. Religion and spirituality. What is the difference? Barriers affecting spiritual health, skills required, spiritual assessment. If you want to do spiritual assessment of a patient, what does it entail? the FICA model of spiritual assessment. We have a model for assessment. Traditional beliefs of illness 
some illness, believe that it is caused by the unseen spirits, caused by the evil ones, caused by the 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 the, the spirits within the uh, that the metaphysical space, which we cannot look at or we cannot see with the physical eye. So nursing process, the nursing diagnosis, implementing spiritual care. If a patient is sick as a nurse, how do you implement spiritual care on the ward? Dealing with the spiritual needs of patients, then we look at the nursing, edu nursing process evaluation. What about the nurse? Uh, conclusion, spiritual distress. If a patient is in spiritual distress, how do you handle it? Signs of spiritual distress. You have to identify by using the signs that these are the signs that uh, indicate that there's a patient who is in spiritual distress. What is spiritual care? Then spiritual caring and the nursing process. Assessment, performing a spiritual assessment, conducting the spiritual assessment, models for spiritual assessment. So complementary and alternative healing modalities. Here we are looking at, apart from the orthodox treatment, what are the other complementary and then the alternative healing modalities? We have the overview, definition or meaning of complementary and alternative medicine. So that is the meaning of CAM. The CAM you see here is complementary and alternative medicine. Factors contributing to consumer desire for CAM. What is informing the population that they are now shifting to seek health care from these alternative medical people? And they are moving away from the orthodox uh, setup and seeking herbal treatment or alternative medicine. In quote, and quote, if I say herbal treatment, I'm talking about uh, alternative medicine. It involves a lot. One of them is the herbal treatment. We have the basic concept, principles underlying alternative healing, beliefs underlying calm and the allopathic systems, overview of popular alternative healing, Therapies, description, overview of popular alternative healing, therapies, that are your vida, the rule of the nurse with respect to calm. If you are implementing calm, what are the rule of the nurse? Then we have the nursing and complementary and alternative medicine therapies, facilitating clients' use of complementary and alternative medicine, integrating complementary alternative medicine into concept conventional setup. So this is how you can you can you can integrate, how you can blend the orthodox system, as well as the complementary and alternative medicine. If you go to Kumasi South Hospital in Kumasi, they have a setup for herbal unit where patients can decide whether they should go to the orthodox treatment or they should go to the CAM or the herbal unit. So we are trying to integrate the complementary and alternative medicine into the conventional setup or the orthodox treatment. And I think TAFU too, they have one at TAFU where there is a consulting room for helper consultants or consultancy, and there's also a consulting room for the orthodox uh, consulting rooms. The case study using complementary and alternative medicine. Then we have the competent, uh, competently legal considerations. What are the legal considerations involved in this uh, treatment? So, so far, these are the, uh, the cost content is too heavy. It's, 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 it's so much loaded with a lot of information. So this is how we're going to handle the, the whole course for this particular semester. So let me take you to the first course we are going to do for this particular uh, lecture. So we have uh,
Okay. Okay. So we have future challenges of nursing. I'm presenting it here. So uh, introduction. Nursing has been called the oldest of the arts and the youngest of the profession. So uh, this statement, anytime I bring it into examination, students fumble. Anytime I bring it into examination, students fumble. So why is it the oldest of the art and then the youngest of the profession? So I remember one of the examinations, I put this there and I said, uh, comment on it or discuss in about a very short, about uh, five to six lines, discuss the oldest of the art and the youngest of the profession. So what I mean about this is that the oldest of the art means that nursing started way back and in Africa, and in, in West Africa, Nigerians were even coming to Ghana to learn the profession. So we have been there since. And little has been made in terms of development, in terms of building capacity, in terms of expanding our training institutions, in terms of specialization. We have seen a very little area in this uh, particular profession. So that is the youngest of the profession. The youngest means that we have not done so much in terms of development, in terms of advancement, in terms of specialization. It is just recently that Ghana College started. And even as Ghana College started, we are even crawling. We are even trying to put bridges here and there. Uh, uh, it's not easy. So that's the youngest of the profession. We haven't gone much into any uh, uh, development. And it is the oldest of the art. We started way back, way back, way back. But little development has been seen. So we've been there since. We started bringing people here to train them, other countries in this country. And we started helping people to uh, establish uh, the nursing profession in other countries. Just recently, one of the countries came to NMC to learn about their modalities and how they do their examination and then they do their training. So we've been there since, but we have not gone far in terms of development. So when I ask you to debate on this or write short notes or comment on this, this is what I'm expecting you to do. I hope it is clear. Any question here? Because it is a very important statement. Yes. If you have gotten me right, if you don't, you didn't get me, let me know so I can uh, explain it to you before I move on. So you see that it has gone through many developmental stages. If you want to talk, you can raise up your hand by clicking on the icon or the emoji. So it has gone through many developmental stages. It is a career. Okay, Charlotte. Yes, Charlotte, let me hear you. Sir, please, I didn't get it. So can you explain it? I Thank said you. it's been there since. We started it a long time. Started training other countries started training other people from other countries. So we have been there, but we have not developed so much in terms of specialization, in terms of training, in terms of developing other uh, human resource base, in terms of building capacity, we have not gone that much. I hope it is clear. Yes, please, thank you. Okay. So it has gone through many developmental stages. It is a career rich in opportunity and variety and gives one the enormous chance or choice of the type of work and setting. Nurse education, so we have, we have to specialize into so many disciplines. Nurse education, nurse administration, nurse practice and research. You can enter into any of these disciplines and you'll be okay. So discussion of current trends will therefore provide a basis for sound decision making. So if we're able to go through this lecture, You'll be able to have a sound decision making after your first degree. What are you trying to, or where are you trying to go after your first degree? Where are you trying to branch into? Do you want to go into education? Do you want to go into research? Do you want to go into a clinical practice? Where do you want to go? So you have to decide. What is nursing? What made what motivate individuals to enter into nursing? So really, what motivated you to even come and do your first degree? What motivated you to even enter into this profession? You have to know the reason. Your future challenging of midwifery care and nursing care trains to watch. So we need to watch the signs of changing. 
we have changing demographics and changing demographics and increasing diversity. What are we trying to mean? We are trying to explain that advances in public health and clinical care will lead to rapid increase in the average lifespan. What we are trying to say here is that if we're able to put our health systems in place and develop it well, making sure that every department has well-equipped instruments, well-equipped uh, uh, health personnel, the skilled ones, those who have specialized into either other areas who can give quality care, all this will accumulate or will accumulate or will average or will aggregate and give you an average lifespan. Look at our lifespan, life expectancy here in Ghana. We are dropping low and low and low. Now you see 35 on the wall, you will see 42 gone too soon and so on and so forth. Now we should be asking ourselves, what is happening? Are we not giving the quality of care to our patients or what is happening to them? So once we are saying that there is increasing diversity, it means that as health personnel, we should build our capacity. One of the steps you have taken is to come and build capacity to do your first degree. You are going to acquire the knowledge and the knowledge you are going to acquire, you are going to use it to help develop and make sure that you increase the lifespan of individuals in this country. So you are going to make sure that you improve quality of care so you can extend the lifespan of an individual. So that is all what we are going to say here. Uh, so we are looking at by 2030, that is the, the, the this thing we have set. By 2030, more than 20% of the population will be 65 and older. So that is, that is the goal we have set. Are we going to achieve it? By 2030, we are having about seven years to go. So seven years to go, are we going to have our older population 65 years and above? So we ask ourselves, greater life expectancy of individuals with chronic and acute conditions, challenge to healthcare systems. So once we are going to expand and increase the life expectancy of our people, we should be also bear in mind that uh, they are going to have acute and chronic illnesses. Are we ready to embrace the acute and the chronic illnesses? Are we going to have the right people, the right human resource, the right environment to cater for these chronic and acute uh, 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 individuals with conditions? So we should be also bear in mind that once, once we expand the, 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 the health systems, once we develop our human resource capacity, then we should be able to uh, be ready to account for uh, cases that may come to our fold. I hope it is clear. But as one ages, you see conditions of musculoskeletal, you see conditions of diabetes, hypertension, and other complications, cardiovascular conditions, you see them. Yes, sir. So I think, yes, they gave it to me. So diverse population affects nature and prevalence of diseases. So diverse population, what are we trying to mean when we say diverse population? Now you see in our country, we are not only here in Ghana. So we are here, first people were not uh, moving into this country so much, we were on our own. You have your, your, your nuclear and your extended family together. Now look at what is happening to our population. Those on the world, you see Indians, you will see Chinese, you will see the Lebanese, you will see other African countries. They are all coming into this country to establish their businesses. Mind you, they will fall sick. They will have health problems or health issues. Are we in the capacity and ready to cater for them? Are we in the, in the situation to care for them? Are we in a better place to uh, give quality care based upon their background? Remember, these people are coming with their background, different backgrounds. They are coming with different backgrounds. Are we ready to accommodate them into our fold? Are we ready 
to 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 care for them. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Hi. Yes. Hi. Yes. Please, is the lecture going on well with you? Yes. Yes. Please. Yes. Please. Yes. 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 So I need to get your feedback to make sure that what we are saying, we are getting it. You are on the oh, water. Yeah, you are the Chinese. You are the. <laughs> <laughs> so so you are seeing the chinese you are seeing the lebanese you are seeing the indians you are seeing the european people coming in the americans are coming in and they have different background are you caring considering their background or you are just giving care what are we doing to help them this is the question we want to ask ourselves they are coming with different kinds of diseases we, which is not known here in our country. We are coming with they are coming with different conditions which uh, 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 is not is not is not considered as part of our conditions here. But they are here on the forsake. When they fall sick, are we ready to care for them? Staff nurses, workforce with a greater experience, expertise, and efficiency. Now we are losing all our workforce outside. We are we are losing our 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 destiny to the Western world. We are we are we are losing our experienced hands to the Western world. We are not keeping them. Now you go to your ward, and a one particular ward is almost closed up. So what is happening? Our experience once are living. And mind you, when you finish, you also leave. So we are not going to see things well. The goal that we have set as 2030, we are going to increase our life expectancy by 65%. We are not going to achieve it if we continue to go. Go with this tangent. We are not going to achieve that. Hello? Uh -huh. So, uh, hello, hello, hi, hi. hi. yes, please. Hi. Um, hi. yes, let me let me let me stop here. I will send a slide to you on WhatsApp, including the course content and everything. And we will have a very full lecture next with God's willing. Okay? Uh, yes. Okay, sir. Today was meant okay, for sir. Thank action you, sir. and other things. Yes. Okay, Thank sir. you very no much. And we are going to have a full lecture. Sorry for the delay. Sorry for everything. We have a full lecture next with God's willing. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.